Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem number or maximum number of points from grid queries. So it's definitely a hard problem, but I don't think it's crazy difficult for like many hard problems at least. Not saying it's easy at all, but let's get into it. We are given here a grid. We're not given three grids. So just to be clear, we're only given a single grid. So imagine that this is the input but we're gonna be given a list of queries. And for each of these queries, we're gonna have exactly one answer. And that uh, value is gonna to correspond to uh, the answers array and the order of these is gonna matter. So if like we have five in the first query, well, the output of that query has to be the first value here. And I mentioned that because in the solution of this problem, we're actually going to need to change the order of these queries. So that's a little hint for you if that's what you're looking for. But in terms of how to answer each query, basically it's sort of like a little simulation. I guess I could just go through the example here. Let's say uh, these are our queries. We can start with five and how we answer it is we take this grid over here. We start at the origin at the top left zero zero. And then basically we are allowed to go in any direction. We're basically allowed to do a traversal on this grid. We are allowed to revisit the same values multiple times. But the catch is that we are only allowed to visit cells that have a value strictly less than this query, not equal, but less than the query. So here we start at a one. So maybe we go down here to two. We can't go right because that's a five, but maybe we can go down to three. Okay, then maybe we go back up because we can't really go anywhere anymore. And then we come back here, we go to two, we go to three. Okay, looks like can't really go anywhere else, can't go to seven, five, or this five. So we were able to visit five cells. So we say that that's the number of points that we were able to collect in the context of this problem. And so the answer to the first query is going to be five. And this picture does a good job of kind of showing which cells we're allowed to visit. Okay, next query over here, six. We do the same thing, except it looks like we were able to visit a five and a five and a one by like doing the traversal. Uh, and, and so that's like eight points that we would get. And the last query is two. So it looks like only the origin is visitable from there. So we only get one point. And then this would be the output, as you can see over here. So knowing that how do we go about solving the problem well there's a lot of ways to do it the first way that you might think of is just kind of a simple graph traversal because sort of these queries are somewhat independent of each other to some extent and they're not a hundred percent independent and that's actually what the optimization is going to be these queries are not all independent do you notice that like if the values were increasing like for example, like over here, I have a grid with the value eight and over here I have a grid with the value five. I mean, I would never expect this grid to have, or, or rather, I guess I would never expect this grid to have any cells that are filled in that we could collect points from that cannot be collected by a bigger number. I hope that at least makes sense. That's kind of the hint at the optimization. Uh, before we even do the optimization, on here, since even though we're allowed to visit the same cell multiple times, we would probably rather not do that. So I think a simple traversal that we could do from here, just going in every direction that we're allowed to, is probably a BFS traversal. Since this is a hard problem, you need to have a very good understanding of BFS. If you don't feel very, very comfortable implementing a BFS from scratch, this problem might be too difficult for you. And that's perfectly fine. You can keep watching the video. Maybe you'll learn a few things, but definitely try out some easier problems where you implement this algorithm. Okay, but now, how would that uh, solve the problem? Well, basically for each query, we would run a independent BFS on the input array. And so in the worst case, like the size of the arrays or the grid is N by M. So for each query, the overall time complexity is gonna be Q, the number of queries, N times M. So this isn't really that bad, but I guess for this problem, it's not good enough. So how can we try to optimize this? Well, that's kind of what I was talking about a little bit earlier. It would be nice to eliminate some of that repeated work, right? That's kind of why I mentioned that this 
is going to have everything that the other guy has except a little bit more, like some of these cells over here. So probably it'd be nice to answer these queries in sorted order because then we eliminate some of that repeated work. So that's the uh, intuition behind doing this a bit more optimally. Okay, so if we did sort the input, suppose I sorted my queries to be something like this. Um, let's preserve the original indexes though. Uh, at least in the drawing. And then I sort these queries and then I actually get two, five, six. We know that when we fill in our result array down here, that since we are going through the queries now in sorted order, when I answer this query over here, I can't put it in the first position. I know that this two was actually at index two. So when I do answer that query, I have to put it over here. Five, I'm gonna have to put over there and six, I'm gonna have to put over there. I'll show you how to handle this in uh, the code. It's not too difficult, just having uh, converting this into like an array of pairs where the index is one of the values in that pair and then sorting that list of pairs by the value is basically how to do it. But anyways, even knowing this, how would we solve it such that we don't have a lot of repeated work? Well, let's say I start with this query. So I'm over here right now. I visit the one, and that is below my value. So, so far so good, but now I'm stuck. I can't really go anywhere. So I say, okay, my current points is equal to one. And then that's like the value that I would put in the output. And now I'm gonna go to the next value in my list, which is five, and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna continue going through this grid. I guess I'll uh, make it a little bit bigger right now. So I'm gonna keep going through the grid now, but. It can't just be a traditional breadth first search. We can't do that actually, because a traditional breadth first search has a queue of values. And so like right now we would have these two guys added to our queue and then we'd kind of go through that queue in order. So like that, I'd go through these and then I'd go through these and these and sort of like that. But that's not how we necessarily want to do this because that doesn't take the actual values into account. So instead, we're actually going to be using a different kind of queue, a priority queue, aka in this case, a minimum heap. So you could think of it as like the minimum heap being initialized with just this value initially. So like in the heap, I'm going to have a tuple with three values in it. One is going to be the value in the grid. So let's say grid at that current row, a column, and the next two are going to be the row and column themselves. And so initially the, the heap would have had the uh, origin value, which is one and zero, zero. We saw that that value was less than two. So we popped it and then we would have added the neighbors of the grid. So the neighbors would have been, I won't be drawing the coordinates. I'll just be drawing um, the uh, values in the heap. So right now we might have a two and a two because that's what these values are. And I'm actually gonna kind of color code which uh, value did what. So I'm gonna use purple for the values that this five query answers. So right now in our heap, we have two values and the minimum is two. We can pop it. It could either be this one or it could be this one. And then we will take uh, the neighbors of that and add them to the queue. We would have popped the two and then we would have added the neighbors which are uh, three and five now and then we'd kind of just keep going. We see, okay, there's another two that we can pop, pop that two, visit that two over here and continue going. Now we can add a couple more uh, neighbors. This one was already added, so let's add uh, this three to the queue. And since we don't wanna revisit the same cell multiple times, we will have a way to account for that. Like uh, for example, I didn't wanna add this guy to the queue multiple times. I will have a visit hash set that will allow me to do that, which will allow me to prevent this. So keep that in mind. Anyways, just continuing uh, through these right now, we see these three are uh, these three values over here. So we continue. We see that we can in fact pop three and we can pop both of them. I'll just quickly do both of them at the same time. So let's say I get this one and I get this one. So I just keep going. My number of points at this point should be five, I think. And these three values here should be in my queue right now. So I'll add a second five in my heap and I'll add a seven. And it looks like at this point, we can't go any further because our current query value is five and we can only visit cells that have a value less than five. So we stop and we answered the current query and I can put a little five in the result array now. 
Okay, almost done. Lastly, I guess I'll use orange for the six. We will look at our queue. Is there anything we can get? Yes, the minimum five is less than six. So go ahead and visit that five and we can do one more. We can visit that other five as well. So I get rid of those from the heap and I would have added a couple values, a one. And I actually, I think seven was already added. So we only add the one to the heap and that can actually be popped as well. So I pop it. I visit the one over here. I can't visit the seven, it's too big. So now we stop the points that we ended with was eight. I can add that eight to the result and now I'm done. So since the fact that we used a minimum heap, this might seem like it's a Dijkstra's algorithm, Dijkstra's algorithm, but it's actually not. It's very, very similar, but it's not quite Dijkstra's algorithm. One of the differences is the fact that we're never adding the same value to the heap multiple times, where in Dijkstra's algorithm, we actually do do that. Um, but anyways, the overall time complexity of this approach is a little bit annoying uh, to analyze. So one is going to be the fact that we sort the queries array. So let's say Q log Q is the time complexity of that plus traversing the array. Um, I think that's going to be bounded by the heap stuff that we're doing. So the size of the grid is n times m. Those are all the values that could be pushed and popped uh, to the minimum heap. And I think the operation for pushing and popping is going to be log n times m. Actually, I guess that wasn't so bad to analyze. So yeah, it's actually pretty simple. So let's go ahead and code this up now. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and reset this now. And the code is gonna involve a lot of like sort of pre-processing. The first thing I'm gonna do is just get the dimensions of the grid. That's like the first thing I usually do. Then we know we're gonna need to do a little bit of sorting. So what I'm gonna do is copy the queries array. I'd rather not change that so I can do this. I'm gonna go through the index number in the queries. I can do that like this in Python. This is called list comprehension. I'm gonna have a pair. I'm not just going to get the queries. I'm actually going to convert this into a pair where I put the number first and the index second, because then when I run q.sort, this will sort it based on the number first. Next, I'm going to get ready for my traversal, which is kind of a BFS with a minimum heap similar to Dijkstra's. So I'm going to have my heap here and it's going to have a tuple with the origin value and the coordinates like this. Next, I can have my result. I'm going to have it initialized with all zeros like this. It's going to be the same size as the length of the queries array. My number of points will initially be zero. And then I'm going to start going a query by query, kind of like how I did in the drawing explanation. I'm going to go uh, unpack the two values in each query, the limit and the index. So that's what I'm calling the value because we know in the context of this traversal, that's pretty much like the limit, the max value. And then um, while the min heap is non-empty, but even more importantly, while the top value in the min heap, so we can get the tuple like this, and then from that tuple, we want the value, which is going to be at index zero, while that is less than the limit. So this is just saying that the smallest value that we have available to us is actually possible that we can visit it. So then we do exactly that. We visit it. So I'm going to do heap pop. Uh, from the min heap, I can unpack these values, the value, row, and column, and then I'm going to increment my number of points because now I was just able to visit a new value. And now I'm going to go to my neighbors potentially and add them to the min heap. So I can get the neighbor coordinates like this. This is kind of tedious, but this is how I usually do it. Row minus one column, and then over here we will update the column. So row column plus one and row column minus one. Then I'm gonna go through the neighbor coordinates, neighbor row, neighbor column. What I'd like to do here is say, okay, heap push this coordinate to the min heap, this uh, tuple with the value of the neighbor row, neighbor column and the coordinates of it as well. And then I would like to be able to mark it as visited. But remember, we don't want to visit the same cell twice. So let's guard this like this. If a neighbor row, neighbor column is not in visit, but also that it's not out of bounds. And we can do that like this in Python. If zero is greater than or equal to the neighbor row, but it's also less than the number of rows and that uh, it's less than or equal to the number of columns and like this. So I'll just fix the syntax here and then indent this. 
But this should go through the four neighbors and just add them to the heap. And then maybe while the heap is not empty and there are still values in there that are less than the limit, we'll continue to process them. When we're done processing all of them, we will just say that in the result array, don't append to it, but for the specific index of the query over here, we're going to set the number of points. And then at the end, we can go ahead and return the result. So you can take a look at the entire code here. Like I said, I don't think there's anything crazy going on here. So this is a really solid problem just to kind of practice the fundamentals. Oh, whoops, I can't believe I forgot to initialize my visit hash set. So, okay, sorry. So let's uh, do that now. Up here, I'm going to create a visit hash set like this, but also I'm going to mark this cell as visited because we see that in our code, every time we push to the heap, which we're only doing once for each cell, we're marking it as visited, but we never mark the origin as visited. So we can uh, just pass that in initially. I'll pass in a little tuple uh, with zero, uh, zero. So now on the left, you can see this code works. It's pretty efficient. If you found this helpful, check out Neatcode.io for a lot more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.